very, what I think is a very productive um, off season. Go way back to the spring, and then uh, the NCA allowed us to have 16 hours of summer workout with our team, as well as the, the additional uh, weight training hours that we were able to be a part of. And then we just finished uh, 12 hours of, of actual skill work again. So we know a little bit more about our team, uh, but it's nothing like we're going to find out starting Friday when we're with them uh, for 20 hours a week. So we're really we're enthused about it. The, the, the workouts have been good. The in, injuries have been small, and you know nothing that is uh, bothersome at this point. Uh, but the attitude is great. The effort has been great. Uh, the will to to uh, to be coached, uh, the will to go to class, all the things uh, have allowed us to coach basketball uh, for the most part. They are all still 18 and to 22 years old, so there's there's always part of that development off the court we're working at, but at the same time, we, we're really excited to begin this, this edition uh, of Michigan basketball. So I really, I, you probably have more questions for me than I would, than I could uh, give you uh, insight to, to right now, so uh, probably the best way to go about this, I think, at this point. Uh, I do, I am excited, I'll tell you one more thing, I'm really excited about the renovations as they come to uh, completion here. The uh, William Davidson Player Development Center is uh, almost uh, complete right now. Uh, I think you'll all see a part of that as we go along the line. Uh, but it's become, a, for, for, for Kim and I right now to be practicing, uh, it's a sensational venue to go in and practice. Wow. The Chrysler was being redone. Uh, I've only had one look at Chrysler about a month ago. The, the, uh, the top of, the, of, of Chrysler, uh, and it is—it's uh, amazing. Uh, it looks like a brand new, a, a brand new building. Like we, we, like we built a, uh, you know, two hundred million dollar building. It's—it's—it's it's, uh, it's going to be a tremendous ad, asset to us. Uh, as far as recruiting, et cetera, that's, that's uh, really uh, natural. But I think what's really going to be best about it is it's going to be so fan-friendly, and our, our fans will really enjoy coming to see Michigan basketball, both men's and women's, uh, in this environment. So how about some great questions, and uh, let's get this year uh, on the way. Who's first? Chris probably. Is there any mic? Okay. Scott will have a mic, as well as Zach will have the mic. Please ask the question in the mic, please. Coach Zach Novak, do you think he kind of set the bar in terms of mental toughness and kind of passed some of that on, kind of passes the torch to some of these guys? He, he certainly, his, his presence will be felt for a long time. You know, four years from now, uh, probably people won't know of him like they do now, but I think Mitch helps bring that in as well. But there's, there's some guys he lived with, with, with Josh, you know, and then Matt Bowbridge and Tim Hardaway all Guys are really close to, to Zach along the way. Jordan Morgan, all our all our veterans really close. I, I can not be quiet. Zach was really instrumental with everybody in everybody's life. So yeah, we feel it, but we have to uh, we have to get away from that at some point. Now there's new people that have to step up and do that, and just like Stu, new people have to step up and give everything else uh, up for the team. And uh, that's the culture. That's what we've been trying to create for years. Hopefully, it'll continue. Nick, John, is it too early, too early for a, a five at this point? You're going with a rough guess, at least. Maybe? Yeah, you know what? We, we uh, it is, it is early. I think when we go into it, I use what I usually do, Nick, is the first two weeks. It is I try to just pair them up and not show any preference. Really put two or three freshmen on one team, two or three freshmen on the other team. People, anybody playing new positions or that we're trying at, and for two weeks, we just. Uh, watch everybody and see where how natural they are in, in if there's adjustments to be made or as as freshmen who we don't know. That's one thing that we did not do during this time is get much into that. We got uh, much more in skill development and just defensive development as opposed to team development as far as five at a time. So the next two weeks, uh, I probably won't tell you anymore, but I will know more. John, coach, can you talk about that? Trey Burke, in terms of the development of his body and the natural leadership he'll be showing from that. Well, I mentioned this morning on a couple of radio shows, and uh, is is he weighs 190, and it's a good 190. 
that he's worked very hard in the weight room, all our guys have. And uh, once again, John Sanderson has done a remarkable job. There's two things that a strength coach has to be able to do. He's got to know what he's doing. He's got to know his craft. He's got to really be good at it. But he's got to connect with young men. And he, he's done both so well that they like to go to the weight room. And, it's, and it, believe me, it is not a, a, a waltz in there. They are working their tails off. So uh, Trey has really has worked his body stronger. If you watch the game, the way it's being evolved right now, that he's involved in so many ball screens, and, and he's got the ball so much. The point guard has to be in a similar type of shape to, I guess, a middle linebacker to a, uh, uh, I don't know if a quarterback has to be in that, a running back who's, who's running at 40 times a, a game. That's the type of uh, shape and strength a point guard needs to have. Chantel? Coach, what were your hopes for Tim's offseason in the summer? It, to, uh, he, was, he had a whole bunch of things that he was working on uh, that we went in our postseason meetings we talked about that he worked on in the summer. You know, first of all, just, just doing more than just being a shooter. You know, working at other parts of scoring, rebounding, things like that. Uh, keeping composure all through thick and thin, no matter what it is. He's very emotional. He, he's very driven. And it's a good thing. But channeling that in the right direction is all things that I think he's really worked on so far. I think he's had a tremendous summer and uh, even a better fall right now than what I see. I, I just like his attitude. I like his, he's, he's out there. He's, uh, he's taking a little bit of Novak as far as uh, just how you can hear his presence. A different type of, of uh, presence, but you can hear it. And you don't, you know, we, that was uh, pretty much left up to Zach in years before. Rod? So how much better do you expect the rebounding to be? That's been one of your kind of Achilles heels yeah. over the past couple of years. But getting in some size with Mitch, uh, with Trey, that, uh, and John, <coughs> this year, that, that rebounding should be one of your strengths this year. Yeah, it, it's, it's interesting, Rod, because it, I do see it in practice right now. And maybe it's because we're missing too many shots. I see how, how important rebounding is. But it is a different way of scoring. Uh, you know, whether there are teams that we didn't have a great inside game, uh, so we, we didn't throw it inside a great, over, over 20 years, 30, 30 some years, we didn't throw it in a lot. Uh, but we were good outside shooting. This is a good rebounding team. So if we can continue, if we show that all through the season, you know, it's, uh, it's okay to score off an offensive rebound. We haven't got a lot of that. And if we, if we can get 10 points off offensive rebounding, um, either through kickbacks or finishes, uh, that's a good thing. And I, because that's not been the norm in rebuilding programs, it's not like you come in and you get this tremendous rebounding team every year. So if we finally got to that point. I have to make sure that's part of our offense is offensive rebounding, because we do have a talent there, uh, Mitch in particular. Mitch and Jordan in particular. Mike? How much you been able to glean about the freshmen, specifically Stauskas and, and I, I miss a third How much you been able to glean about the freshmen because you've been able to work with them more, especially Glenn and Yeah, and 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 Mitch. I, what I really learned is that they really want to be coached, and they like they like our culture, and they're, they're embracing it. Uh, there hasn't been the, uh, the, the any pushback of, you know, well I'm uh, I'm used to doing this. How come I have to do that now? Right? And that, why do I have to? For example, you know, I was sort of open. The next guy was was more open. Why do I have to pass it to him when I've done this my whole life? They just said, "Oh, okay, that's what we, if that's what we do. That's what we do." And uh, whether they're sharing the ball, whether they're getting in the stance and playing defense, really receptive. And and I, I don't like to judge between teams, but as intelligent as the team that I've had it coming in this first this, over the summer. Now maybe that has to do with the. Uh, the 16 hours we had in the summer, but there's one thing to uh, to gain to to get information. There's another thing to put it right into action. Now Glenn Robinson's had a couple of times where he took information, he gathered it, and it was right. It was he was doing it 10 minutes later. With, with all our freshmen, we've seen that. You mentioned Glenn. Is he maybe done that more than most, and, and maybe more than most freshmen you've ever had? No, I think they all are. It's just a blind example. He he has done it, uh, but it is it is really interesting to see the the, uh, the level that they've been able to just 
just pick up a new term. And, and these are, you know, just as they transcend into college basketball, is what I always say, that there's no way, you know, you walk out there, there's three assistant coaches, a head coach, a trainer, a strength coach, we're all out there working, they got all these people, and they may have been used to one voice, and now this is a whole different thing. And uh, they have they have embraced it. At times they get confused, but that's great. We had a great moment yesterday. We got done with the practice, it was the end of our preseason, and we had Josh Bartlestein, Corey Person, and S.O. Okune. Three guys that very rarely play, all had freshmen pulled off to the side, saying, okay, this is exactly, because coaches were leaving the court, this is exactly what we're talking, you're, we were just talking about, you can do this. It was, it was really a good moment for me walking off the court saying, uh, there's a lot of teaching going on, it's not just from the coaches. I'm running right, Tom. John, I know you have non-conference play the NIT and such uh, before Big Ten play starts, but can you <coughs> kind of assess the Big Ten race and is the, is the Big Ten in basketball um, like the SEC football, do you think with the with the Indiana's, Michigan State's, Michigan's, that uh, you uh, warrant such a uh, an evaluation like I, that? I, you know, I, I I watch a lot of college football, but I'm a bit, I'm, I'm a big I'm a Michigan fan, obviously, and I don't watch the Southeast Conference as much, but I I do hear some of the things, so I, I hate to compare that. Oh, I, every coach says this. I've never seen it like this, where we have nine or ten programs that. Our, have had the same coach or have the program sort of, they've had two or three years to get themselves, to get things in the right direction. And you just look at the teams that have been, well, I felt when I got here, and maybe I'm wrong, there were like five or six that were in place, and the rest of them were just, who's going to be the sixth or seventh team was what everybody was fighting for. Uh, now it may be, well, who's going to be the eighth or ninth team that could get in the NCAA tournament? Or is uh, you look, just look what uh, Minnesota did last year? I mean, they were a heck of a team. You can see that they had two road wins in the NIT. They're in the championship in the NIT, and they were trying to get into that you know top seven or eight uh, prior to that. And so many people have so many people back. Uh, it is uh, it's as it's as good a league as as I've ever seen. I, I'm assuming that you know the guy, the coaches have been here for a long time they, in the league, and there's only a couple of them. Uh, but probably Bo and Tom could answer that. So they go back 20 years. How good is this league right now? I think it's pretty good. Uh, Coach, with the freshmen coming in, uh, where's the trade-off between putting them where they're most comfortable, where they can show what they can do, versus where the team might need them during the season? Yeah, that's that's the balancing act that I'll really have to work at. Right? What is it? What's important now, or what's important to their future, or our future? And we're all, we're scrambling with Daniel every day. I mean, okay, now he can do this. He can't do that. We can't say, well, he can't do it. Here, here was a perfect example. Tim Hardaway's freshman year, it took us 15, 20 games to put him in the ball screen. Because at the beginning, he wasn't as comfortable with it. It changed our season when we had two guys as primary handles, him and Darius Morris. So now we're in that same thing with some of our guys. What can they handle now? What is too much? And I'm thinking every sport can go through this. You know, when does when does a baseball pitcher, you know, start throwing uh, uh, off-speed stuff when he's trying to get to the major league? It's a you don't want to do it too early. You don't want to take away his fastball. It's a thing we have to do. So it's important, and that's our job. And I won't be perfect at it, but I'll just keep working at it to get them to accomplish both goals. Number one is for the team to win right now, but the number two to develop as much as he can for our team for our team in the future and for his future after this. On your right, Jeff. You know, it's one thing to start a season and have a chip on your shoulder trying to gain respect. You're starting this year with some pretty high expectations, a high ranking. How are you going to handle that? I think John B. Line's always going to have a chip on his shoulder. You can never worry about that. I'm always trying to, to find a way to get, uh, to be the best team that we can be and in and, 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 and every single fat, it, uh, fashion that we can do that and I hope my team reads that so I, I don't think we're going to be anything where we're uh, we come into this thing thinking we're anything more than just a, a 15 guys with four coaches that are out there working so hard just to enjoy every day to be able to really really work as hard if not harder than everybody to be smart if not smarter than other teams just keep working at that, and that, that keeps all that stuff away. 
But I, there's going to be, obviously, there are going to be games. It's going to be, every season is a roller coaster. Uh, I'm sure there's going to be games that we won't do as well as we would like to have. And, and maybe that crept in there somewhere. But there's going to be other games where we're really going to play well. And it was like, hey, we played with a sense of purpose that has the chip on the shoulder. That's, uh, I hope my teams are always like that. Go ahead, follow. Do you feel your top five team? Do I feel that? You know, I don't even I don't even pay any attention to that. How would I know that if I didn't know what anybody else had? I know Michigan has a team that I, we're trying to have, have them develop to find their potential. Now, I don't. I'm not in other people's practice. I have no idea what other people have. Uh, if people base things off just recruiting, they're probably going to be wrong a lot more than they're right. If you look at, at whether it's us or somebody else. Uh, look at people over a long run of what they do. That's how you, you best find out. So uh, we're, we, we have a chance to keep improving every day. We have a chance to, just like all the teams in the Big Ten, to go after a championship in the Big Ten. On your left hand. John showed a lot of flash before his injury. With, with uh, his added bulk, what are you expecting from him? Yeah, he, had, he was another one. He and Jordan Morgan spent a lot of time in the weight room over the summer, uh, working out on their own. Uh, and uh, I just love right now, he's, he's taking the, ba the smallest steps sometimes you can take, and many steps backwards just to make another big step forward. But he can, he's one persistent young man, and he keeps working and just saying whatever you say, he just keeps working and working and working. And he's had some workouts this summer where there was the, some of the similar mistakes he's made before. We all know them fouling right away, doing things that he knows better than. He catches himself certain. But there's some other things, you, 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 there's those aha moments where you say, uh, he's really improving. And uh, so with, and better than that, any of that, the kid, his teammates love him. He loves his teammates. And they love playing with him. On your right, Chris. You've got a lot more options now for the five. You know, how much do you see the roles changing, and how much experimenting will you do with that? Well, the, the, uh, we, we, we do have, we have like four or five people, really six, that could play there at different times. So that's, that's the uh, versatility I'd love to have. But it is difficult. Uh, I mentioned again today, it, it is, that four man is a pivotal guy now on teams. You know, if you, if you look in the NBA playoffs, who was playing the four-man for the Oklahoma City late? It would be Kevin Durant. Who was playing four-man for the Heat? That would be LeBron James. So that four-man sometimes can, be, can, can go so they really got four guards out on the floor, or you could play really big. Uh, it depends on who you're playing. And, but we like having that option where we had no, I didn't feel we ever had a choice in the back. And when John got hurt, I didn't feel we ever had a choice in last year. And we weren't developed that much the year before. And what we were doing was working uh, as well as we, could, we thought we could do. So I like having that option. Who knows where this will play out, really. Uh, Coach, last year I know the goal pretty much from day one was to win a Big Ten title. Um, is there any specific rallying cry for this year? I think it's the same goal. I think it will always be the same goal. I, I think that, that is throughout the, the University of Michigan. That, I've always felt that if you can compete for a Big Ten championship, you can compete for a national championship. And if we are indeed one of the best leagues in the country, then it follows right along. But I, you know, everybody dreams big. And we, we honored that 1989 team and what they did was such a tremendous part of, of Michigan lore and Michigan basketball history. Uh, but there's, there, there's a lot of ways we measure ourselves. One of the primary ones is Big Ten champions. And as hard as it to do. We've only had 13 of them. And we've been playing basketball a long time. So, and that's a good number compared to other teams in the league. But it's, it's still always going to be the primary goal. Hey coach, we've heard a lot of buzz about Nick's shooting ability and how well he's doing in the three-point shooting drills. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, he's just got a natural ability to find the bottom of the basket that, I, that I've seen uh, uh, what, what separates Nick is that what we hope will make him a very difficult guard, that where some guys are just shooters. Uh, Nick, if you come out on Nick, Nick can put the ball on the floor and get to where he wants to get to. And then some guys can do that, and then they can't throw drop-off passes or see the court. He's been able to do that thus far. 
So uh, with that being said, we're, we work, we see that, we like it. All right, Nick, now we gotta defend. And, and so he, uh, I, I sense he's embracing because he knows that's how he gets to do the other stuff. And like most shooters, right, is that they, 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 they love shooting the ball. Um, we're gonna, he, I would sense that if he continues what, uh, what he's been doing so far, uh, he among some others will have a, a pretty green light to, to let it ride. Left mic. Getting back to the pressure for a minute, do you have to temper their expectations at all, or do you want some of them to believe that they could be some of the best players, best freshmen in the country, best players in the country? You know, I, I just all we want them to do is uh, follow our expectations, which would be be a team player, work really hard, work in the classroom. That's so. There's nothing to temper. What they need to do is just follow along what we want them to do, and then it all seems to work out. Uh, so, uh, we want these, and they, they've done nothing, Mike, to do that. They just, all right, they're looking around, all right, what did Matt Bogers just do? What did Tim do? How is Trey doing this? And then they follow along. That's the expectation. Uh, and if they just do those things, all those other expectations will probably take care of itself. So it's not a, it's not a run around of the question, it's just the truth. We, there's nothing to do there except follow the leaders and, and the coaches and the, and the veterans are all the leaders. Down front, down. Kind of a two-parter on guards uh, with Stavskis. Uh, have you seen enough people flying at him uh, when he's shooting to know what that impact will be? And the other is uh, when you have, you've got two point guards that you feel are natural point guards mm -hmm. this year. Just the, the comfort level in having that. Well, that was big because it, 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 last year there, there was really no one that, that was really felt comfortable in that situation. So it was... I know Trey's tired, it was a year before. I know Darius is tired, but let's call a timeout and get him some rest and make sure that he's going to bed on time so he can, you know, I think that, the, not that I don't want to, we're still going to call timeouts, but we have a lot of confidence in those two, that they will be able to, uh, we can use those 40 minutes as productive, the more productively we have in the past where we don't have to use a timeout, uh, we don't have to take somebody out, but we can take somebody out even if it's a couple minutes rest. So uh, we love what we've seen from Spike, we do. We do. And we all saw uh, just some of the great things Trey could do last year. So, uh, it, but, but it, what was key to our season last year was not just Trey, it was, it was Stu's uh, ability to put the ball on the ground and to just make some things happen. I mean, in the Purdue game against great defenses down Purdue, that was a, that was maybe a Big Ten championship type of game because we won on the road where few people are going to win. He could do that. Uh, Timmy's worked tremendously on that. So uh, Nick can do that. Karis LeVert can do that. And you see Nick with people coming at him when he's shooting? Um, he's been, you know what, he's, I don't know if I know what you mean. He, he shoots it before they get there a lot of times. But if they do get there, yeah, he can deck the ball. You know, and, and, and I said, and Karis does as well. John, you talked about how different this team is than the ones you've had for 30 years. How different has that been for you and prep-wise? And did you do things differently this summer to prepare that way? Yeah, you know what? We use those 16 hours to do install offense, thinking that you know you could work on defensive flies all summer, but it's two hours a week. It's 12 hour, 12 weeks before the season. We just worked on our skill level on offense all summer. Defensively, we've been most uh, this September and first two weeks been. I'd say 75% of <coughs> thinking, what's the easiest thing we can teach our guys? Defend, rebound, and run. And so if we can do those two, you don't have to run as many plays. You don't have to do as many things. So defend, rebound, and run. So we've been working on de defending and rebounding. Now we'll try and put more of a package together. But uh, it, is, it is interesting conversation right now. And as I don't know what we're going to do yet until I can watch people over 20 hours and 20 more hours and 20 more hours and then we get to the Big Ten ske schedule, we'll be able to make other changes. Did you study anyone else? No, we studied ourselves and uh, no, not, not really. I mean, we're, we're playing two big, big post guys is a, is a difference. I think we watched the NBA very closely, much closer than before and cut more tape than we ever have about uh, Different things that they use when they have two post, two when they have two primary postmen.
On your right, Rob. John, how much is the, the loss of the NCAA tournament talked about or used as, as motivation to make sure that they stay hungry this year? Yeah, I don't think at all. We haven't spoken about it at all. I mean, we're very proud of our Big Ten championship. Uh, we, all, we, we know well. When you get into that, the goal is to, to put, stay and win, and win until you win it all. But uh, based on the, the, our Big Ten championship, we felt really good about it. And uh, I think we'll, uh, if we're blessed enough to get back there again, then we'll talk a little bit more about that. But right now, it's been more about just getting better and trying to, to be champions again. In everything, preseason championship, help the ACC, win the, or help the Big Ten win the ACC Big Ten Championship, you know? Just different little things to, 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 to preseason IT, that tournament, uh, we're, we're uh, in our uh, executive tournaments, the whole thing, just try to win those tournaments. Okay. We have time for a few more. John, you mentioned the injuries have been small. Is there anyone that is not playing right now in the game? Corey Person just has a little bit of a, uh, uh, a foot stress issue, but everybody else is pretty much back. There's some rehabbing going on and some small nagging things that we've tried to use this time to get them well. Uh, but uh, we're hoping to get through those first two weeks without anything major. And uh, the stress, the foot stress problems, are, we had two last year. So we're trying to do whatever we can to avoid that again. And then what do you what do you uh, you have plans on what you're gonna do with captains or is that something? No, no. You know what? That, that is one that I don't think there was any doubt last year it was gonna be Zach and Stewart this time. We are gonna really watch these first three weeks and see who are the who the leaders are. I don't think we're in that type of position uh, to name that yet. Uh, uh, the the players will have a say. The coach will have to say. We need to gain more information. On the right, Tom. John, despite the high expectations going into the season, do you feel like you still have to sell Michigan basketball on this campus as well as the alumni body and perceived football school or not? Or is one taking care of itself? No, I, I, uh, I've never really thought too much about that. I, I, we are, you know, we're one of the two schools that's won a national championship in football and basketball. And uh, we feel right now that there's, that obviously, the, the, the programs are different. One has 120,000, and one has a tradition that is 115,000. One has a tradition of yearly, yearly. Michigan basketball has been up and down over time. Uh, we're trying to get it so as, as consistent as our basketball, or as our football program has been. But no, we're not selling that. We're, we sell Michigan, and it's not uh, anybody th thinks that we're just a football school. We are an athletic department from top to bottom that is second to none anywhere in the country. And men's basketball is part of that. And uh, we're very proud to, to be a, a big part of that. So we are, uh, we're enthused. Anybody that, that, if you look at the times that, uh, just you can, the times that we're on CBS or ESPN, uh, compared to other schools, I think we're the only one that is a football percentage school that is at the very top of the list. We're, we're, we're recognized for both sports. We don't have to sell that. Last question, Joe. We're recognized for a lot of sports, actually. Hey, Coach. Um, uh, Tim played a lot at the three last year, and in this offseason he's expressing a, sort of an expectation to play more at the two. Where do you see him uh, playing most of his minutes? Both. Yeah. Uh, we like him uh, in both. He's obviously very natural as a three-man, uh, and he's, uh, he knows what he's doing over there. But we have a couple of in between Matt and Glenn. They're all and Nick and Karras. They're all options. And it's where we get people most comfortable. And once again, in two or three weeks, we should know more. And then we'll start our season and we'll say, well, that, that's not going to work. Let's move in a different direction. In the Big Ten, we might move in another direction. But right now, we like that he's versatile enough to play both. He enjoys both and he wants to. He's, he's so driven. Uh, he can accomplish anything he wants to. All right. Thank you, Coach. All right. Thanks, everybody. Somebody can uh, follow Dick.